I'm just doing a bit of a just a quick reincarnation one, but it will work for one to eight. I'll put in a link of me doing an eight on uh, the bunny, the, the, the tail, just to show you how it works and it scales well, so you can see that in action. And then uh, and then an eight jockle. I just don't have the time to do every hero. I, I did set myself the task on doing eights on every hero, but that was before I started recording. And there's just not a lot of updated information about what is best and what's the choices and they all disagree about the starting blessings and what to choose here on Lone Wolf. But I'm giving a case for, I think Spores is really powerful and it's a weapon based um, run and so it's dependent upon that. We just need defensive skills in our ascensions are our main choices. And if we get unlucky on ascensions, it will give us a successful run irrespective of a bad ascension run. Um, we just want some scrolls for defense and so forth. Now the fox is one of the harder ones to do on the harder difficulty solo. It's all right in a co-op situation where you can pick each other up but one mistake and you're down and we don't have as much defense as some other heroes that have built in defense either in their talent tree or in the way that their um, E skill works or their Q skill works to give them defense. So we need to, we're a bit of a glass cannon and, and you'll hear that term used about the fox. Very powerful, but skills tend to pitter out near the end. So I won't go into great deal time now. If you want to know about that, um, I'll do it along the way and just put chapter markers about build. But just to show you, I have another window open that is the, the conventional builds and the best up to dates two months ago that this video came out. He is the best, I think, on the channel of the, on the subject of gunfire builds. Um, it's telling you the choices to make from left to right, but we will swap that up a bit because we're going for defensive over damage in our skills early on because everything hits so hard and we fall over so easily. Now, Lone Wolf does make it as if you're playing two-player, so everything hits hard. We can fall over early, but as once we get spores, we're set. So I will, even on an R1, be very easily killed. Um, and we've got to be careful until we get spores and a few ascensions and a few scrolls in comparison to some other heroes. But you can be successful, and this makes more of a... I'm going after this one. There you go. I knew I wanted it. If you don't have a lot of... Um, uh, Solicence, roll it two or three times, get out, you won't be charged for it, you're refunded. You only get charged when you go through that door. So um, I'm going to choose that, which means I did a whole series of videos and they're linked and pinned on beating reincarnation on every, not reincarnation, spiritual assault on every hero. And the fox actually got feline scroll and buffer shield where he, she became immune. And it was fun to do that. So have a look at that video. But I'm applying the same logic to reincarnation. Once I worked out how to smash every time um, spiritual assault on every hero easily and you can make the shotgun and the injectors drop because of the loadout that you do in the concentrator, you can't do that here. So there's a little bit of RNG, but that removes money from the game. You are struggling early game, even late game, to be able to upgrade your weapons at every craftsman. Um, so I'm just going to choose any weapon here. It doesn't matter. It's going to be replaced. So we're looking for a wild hunt or an Argus. Just picking up some ammo. Q's here because it's 300%. We did overconsumption because it's 300% skill damage, 300% weapon damage, 50% movement speed, 50% shield, 50% health. Um, and cooldown on dash by 50%. Now the only thing is with every scroll that those statistics are reduced. Legendary scroll will reduce it by 3%. Um, but it's a good scroll, it doesn't matter. So as we get stronger in the run, we get ascensions and better scrolls, and we've got spores, you know, it starts to balance out, but we're very powerful early to get through the first few bosses with ease, and once we get spores, even more so. Now on a higher run, I would go through that goblet there and get it and come back to this. If you don't know what's in the room, uh, well, the first two bolts aren't usually that challenging, the third can be very difficult on a high run. A difference on an R8 to lower R, you know, reincarnation runs is, um, let me just kill that there, that nearly every room has a challenge message in it. And I'd say the first tip I want to say on the harder stuff is read your messages carefully. Not a great one. I mean, it slows down, puts corrosives on as a pulse on stuff, but 
you know, by that time, we're going to get spores, it's not really going to make a difference. I just want to scroll the hand over if I don't. Oh, what came there, man? I didn't see you charge me spearmen on the vein of my life. I nearly died, even in R1. Said, not a lot of defence on this guy. Okay, I've got on the corners here, looking for some stuff. And we'll talk builds now. So, I'll tell you what I'm looking at after I choose that. That's the first choice, and that's on the screen that's linked. So this one assumes that you've got to actually do burning damage, which our spiritual... Um, Flame will do, and even our Meteor will put it on, but a fire weapon will do it as well. And we will get weapon damage increase, as well as, even though it's only up to 100% there, we've already got 300% by overconsumption. It's more for the defense of um, up to five stacks minus 50%, up to 18 stacks minus 180%. And when we get hit, we lose those stacks, you know, according to how hard we get hit. So it's more of a defensive that our burning is being used as a defensive. So. You know, the two that we really want are this one. That when we do our E, our spiritual flame, or we have burning on through our weapon or whatever, where our max shield goes up huge. And if you get that scroll that changes your paranormality, it changes all your health into shield, we become very survivable, like really can have a great buffer from being killed. And we are a glass cannon, so that's really helpful. And the other one is that pick there. So there are two main defensives. You can do any of those builds on the link screen. I like the Spiritual Flame, though I'm not going to be doing my E later on. The Q means it's a quick, if you're doing sort of a Meteor build, probably a bit better because it enhances weapon damage, these ones. And you can see there, the top one there, the unkillable Fast Firing Fox. If you follow that there, which is using this and this one here, um, and you know a couple of these but there's a priority so we're, we're really looking for and I'm looking for the unkillable the first one on the on the column there uh, that I've linked so fast firing weapon build and rate of fire means more spores are hitting harder and quicker so we're really wanting this build but that included in um, and he's he's laid that out slide RNG has laid that out for us so we'll make the decision along the way we've got our build but even if you get a bit, you know, you don't usually get your build coming together towards the end of the run. But spores and overconsumption will. You had to be immortal, didn't you? Will carry us until that point where things get really hard. I'm looking for, and I like that one. That used to be one I liked, but money's not an issue now because of our starting choice. I was looking for a shotgun and none turned up. It would have been good to get one there. We need a shotgun and we need a wild hunt. Um, it'd be best to get them around level 2 and if we get those at level 2 and any main weapon that's fairly fast firing we'll have spores before the first boss and I'll show you how to get that in time stamp for you I'm only doing these because uh, you know I just wanted you to understand the build and where to get a good build, it's essential. You know, my first R8 bunny kill that I ever got, I credit Slight with that and thank him for it because, you know, I did the Blossom Enthusiast build and um, I just, there's so many choices in this game, it's so complex. When you're learning the game, you just need some good guidance by somebody that understands. The only thing with Spiritual Flame here early um, is it's got a long charge up time and we are at glass again and it does destroy in one whole rooms like that but and remember our primary is reduced so we're getting energy build up because of overconsumption quicker without even choosing ascensions just sell that for money not that i need it yet but a little bit money at the start is good Okay, so we've got another top pick there. So that's the always pick at the top, regardless of the build you're going for. Now there's usually a peddler in this room. I'm just gonna look around, there he is over there, or a craftsman. Um, and hopefully we get uh, a shotgun off there. And it'll be sweet if we do for the getting spores early. Just using your meteor on the you know, stuff that's bunched up to blow them up. 
they're enhanced, they are in eggs for those. Boy, they hurt the enhanced ones, leave the fire on the floor. It happens. I'm just going to kill these and have a peek at the craftsman. In solo play, the good thing is that the craftsman has paused the game, the pedal has paused the game, and if there's a better firing weapon, like a, like a rainbow or a radioactive glove, or that'll do. Start of hour is very nice. Uh, we'll do that one there, that one there. And well, these will eat through their shields. Just a fast firing weapon, so we can get spores on this ladder on this temporary weapon. It's not what we want ultimately for the run, but it will do. That's a spore play, so for the first boss, I've nailed it. Uh, not a bad meteor. Just meteored the thing in the middle of the room. Now, again, uh, you know, um, we're just doing to get burning on. Our shield regen is just burning because of that one choice. It just gets up so quickly after a knee. So I'm using my fire, my spiritual flame, really to keep my shield back up. Okay, what have we got there? Just to check I didn't miss anything. If you're doing jockle, you get to refresh these as well. Hex is, that's not a bad weapon either, just defensively, but it's not a good spore placer. Uh, fire rate on this is over a thousand. All I want is fire rate high. Put that in the main hand, we just need a shoddy now. Oh, we got a shoddy too, that's not the best spore shoddy. But we've got two weapons and I can temporary, it's got a very high projectile count, but the base damage on an Argus or a Wild Hunt would be over 110 or something at that level. It doesn't scale well for the run, but it'll do us. We got our, we'll be able to do the first wasp boss with spores. Haven't even got to the first um, craftsman, so we're doing all right. Uh, and this one we can split it. If you're in another bit, another hero like the dog or something that has health regen, you might go for the health as a buffer and then hope for a scroll like Flesh and Bones. We have to use Paranormality as a scroll if we're going to turn our health into shield, but not the other way around because the way that our defensives ascensions work to build shield um, regen and stuff. I have done it, it is nice when you do a spiritual flame build before I sort of learn about spores a bit and you just wipe whole rooms out or out when you get your ascensions. Not gonna be the spinning guy with the head, yeah, it's a spinning guy with the head. Oh no, um our radar our jockle, he's really dangerous. If he gets the you, he's one shot you. So I might even jump out of that point. Um, because if we had spores he would die very quickly, but you can you know, lose a run after your major scroll selection. Just paying them up for fire, and now you'll be spawn when he dies. It would have been good to be a scalpel I would have used if I didn't have the star, but this has got a higher fire rate, so spore plan are better. That's over 1200, that would have been alright, but we've already got a weapon. But, you know, what I'm saying is we've got our main hand, we really wanted a shot to drop then, and we didn't get it. But we've still got peddlers ahead. That's a really nice one to get early. Yep, so we'll go that one. Every elite, especially on the higher ones, we get invaded all the time by elites. Even in side rooms, you get invaded. Um, just means that that's going to have down there later. Uh, so I was just reading that. The, you'll see that number go up by percentages. It's on zero because we haven't killed anything, a boss or anything. Okay, we head through. Uh, you know, that's just for a spiritual flame build. 
um, you know, it's not uh, not that we're doing that build. But I'm not worried about the fire damage it spores. It's just going to pew pew once we get that, as you'll see on the first boss. <laughs> Uh, this room, the most dangerous, is not the shield guy, but the bowman. Uh, oh, these guys too. And it does projectile. The long bowman, the cross bowman, just try to keep get your shield back up. Good thing about our E is it goes through, he's robust. Our spiritual flame goes through their shields, but you can sort of bait them so that when you, you straight them, I don't want to do it yet because there's fire. But you just bait him and then straight around him. Like he'll come and try to hit me now. Then. I'll just crit him in the head. Oh, that was a bit late, that one. But anyway. Cancel that one. You can cancel by doing your mouse, middle mouse. So you don't use the energy. I'm going to get out of there only because it's. You can, your E will not activate these guys that are in grey, so you can use skills here, but if you miss hit something, it's only one scroll and I'll slow the run down. So skills won't activate the unactivated guys, but if you start pew pewing with a weapon, everything comes alive. It's easy to die in there on hard runs. No, I just don't slow that run down. Oh, I got stuck there. Corrosive on me, not good. Q&A, the long bone in there is the most dangerous. Don't worry about the shield guys, even though there's a power. As long as you're not near them. And I'm using the column so the long bone can't hit me. I'm waiting for him to die. Just painting him up for fire damage and defense. Shield regen. Okay, we did that. I did a run when I did a spiritual flame run with all of the defensives filled out and I was on the uh, yeah, servant bot getting hit, just casting E and I was like unkillable. So that's what that unkillable is the best run for. I think R8s or R8 droppers on this guy. He just has such good high defensive. But it does rely on getting the ascension, so if you can get up here and shoot their head, there's another way to kill these. Don't rush down the end of the room there. You want to do each section at a time if they spawn at going under the bridges. Did we get an invasion? Yeah, we got an invasion here. Uh, for that guy, I'll explain. We'll go through his shield, but get up high. You can shoot him. Up there. Gee, he's got some bullets. That guy's soaking up. If we had spawn, we'd be destroying any elite. Like in a couple of seconds. So that's what we want to just try to get. The boss is going to be after this room, aren't this is the hardest room, by the way, um, in Act 1, in my opinion. Because the uh, crossbow is brutal. If you have the rainbow, it's really good. Because you can shoot, if the crossbow is up, you shoot through the floor. Got him. Okay. He's down. Thunder. I'll take that. It does stun them for a second if they're around you, but. Come under here and kill these, and the long bone will jump down, and then you can kill you if you stand out there, like that. Just don't get boxed in here, we can run away from there. You just use the columns so the range can't shoot you. You can hear them shoot, just pop out after they shoot. If you've got the rainbow, you just shoot them all up top, even that guy. goes through these four heads. But we haven't got any of that upgraded just yet. Skills got early but later on a bit like muster. Unless everything perfectly aligns. Scrolls and ascensions. Uh, 50% worth doing with the next shot after meteor. It's only the next shot. Um, so yeah I'm just gonna go that one which is part of the uh, spiritual flame build just going to help out ease a bit more. Now we're going to get another one through the door there. They're both weapon two. So I might get a better shotgun through the door, like on the peddler. I want to might get the Argus or something I can keep for the entire run. So I'm going to bounce this one up first for that reason to five. Etch it. And then one, two, three. We got spores. 
I've got like 12 run you know, clicks sometimes. You haven't got the gold this early. So we go straight over to here and see if there's a shoddy that we want for the run. That's better. That's got a load multiplier. I do want that scroll. It's a good one, especially for injectors. Um, no shoddy. So we'll have to upgrade that and keep it until we get a better one. So we do lose the first craftsman's upgrades. It's nice to have the shotgun like the run I just did on the monkey. I had uh, my Argus by now. It's RNG. So we bump that up three times. If you etched early, it would just put another green etching on there. None of the etchings play any, any role. It's just that number and that number. Um, except for the main weapon and we're looking for rate of fire like 50% rate of fire on kill don't forget to reforge that um, lucky shot chance secondary and we have in our ascensions rate of fire that we can increase using the fast unkillable you know fast firing fire weapon build sort of thing okay so we've got spores we've got mo check uh, make sure you got that going in here i didn't look what boss it was this is the guy with the columns yet crit spots his eyes and in the middle there, but look at this fellow again. If it was an RA, we would have gone not as quick as that, but you know, fast firing weapons putting spores on means the run is now easy mode. Would have been nice to get a rainbow. Oh, feline cat, man, nice. Best defensive in the game. Take 100% weapon damage, but when you get down to your health, it will only, one hit will not be more than 14%. So if a massive boss hit hits you, 14%. And then you've got a chance whether you've got some defensives to get your shield back up by doing flame or a fire weapon. Um, so we'll just do the standard, you know, um, spiritual flame build here. So that's our first pick. It's going to make us have four casts down bottom there. And looking at spiritual flame build, as I said, that's on the left of the build saying pick first before you move across to the right. Oh, plenty good on cues. Don't need to melt anything because we've got plenty of money. Now, what you'd like to do at this point to make a, a hard run successful is you want fake death. Really, on solo play, it's the strongest first. But we'll do uh, anything that doesn't help hurt weapon damage, basically. Um, never do that one because it diminishes your primary cooldown and things like that. We, uh, we just want something that makes our Q's and our E's hit harder. And we'll do that. So we didn't get it, but that's the RNG of fake death. Every 45 seconds you get a cooldown on it. You die, you quickly kill something, run away for 45 seconds as a chicken. And then you can see the cooldown on the bottom right when you have the little heart will be ticking down. When it disappears, you know you're right to go again. Now this room's hard without spores, especially on higher runs. You're going to get arsonists, you're going to get retainers that are, I can hear them cocking up for shotguns but here come the arsonists but spores you don't even have to hit their crit spot anywhere will blow them up and once we get an injector as long as it's fast firing the way the spores works is the fast and firing weapon see the number above the head there 18 it's, when it hits 30 it explodes so we get our fire rate up and we get a weapon with fire rate on here um, it's 50% on kill and then we get some of our ascensions for the fast firing weapon build and we're just getting explosions all the time what have I got on my normals I really like that in the last act or the second act but we haven't got our final weapon I might have even run ahead and come back for this um, so we could upgrade our shoddy our off weapon but we might not be we might be keeping that probably uh, Again, 50% damage and shock. And that means we're not reloading because we're killing an enemy. I just might have to do the off weapon for now. And that's why I keep the bad scroll to hand over from the first chest. And we'll up that. Don't need to do our main weapon. We only upgrade our spores weapon for the run. Usually I have my Argus Wild Hunt, but you'll get it before the second boss. And if we've upgraded this one too much, we might have to stick with it. Let's paint them up for our defence. They're hitting hard anyway. That's guys can be brutal actually. On high runs, just play safe. 
can hear them shooting and then I pop out after I heard the, hear the third shot. I turn the sound down so you can hear commentary a bit better, but sound is really important in this game. Elite Invasion, getting a lot on my R1 lately. He's really dangerous, he does corrosion. And we got a rainbow, lovely. And why that is a great weapon, and I just want to display why it's the best defensive weapon in the game to play in here. Um, so I'm looking for radioactive glove. We've got an Argus uh, bummer I just upgraded. As I said, I usually come back. Um, Trust will be up ahead, so we won't have spores by doing this. I'm going to swap my weapons. It's early. I just I would normally come back for these. Uh, oh, maybe I do. There'll be craftsmen. I'll come back, wipe out the room with with uh, spores already, because it is night and day, even on a one. Um, so let's do that. Oh, what am I doing, Sean? Just keep these back here. We've got our two weapons, and that'll be our weapon for the run. Okay, wipe out the room. And then we'll come, there should be a craftsman in this room usually. Because we had a peddler in there. There he is. So we'll come back and do the weapons after we've cleaned this room. You could uh, pick the weapons and run to it, but I had to make sure it was there. I could have picked around, but this is a pretty tough room to do without. Spores because you've got these guys coming down. And just doing that for defence. And they nuke you, the arsonists. Just really want the arsonists and the shotgun guys down there this time because they will just tear you up. Okay. Just painting some fire. Q. He's immortal, of course. Just get out of the line of sight so he can't shoot you down low here. He's trying to get the angle on me. He's dead. Okay. Nearly there. Just got another guy here. Good thing about this is, you know, even in the, the heat of it, you can just shoot them anywhere and spores hits like you're critting. So I'm going to drop those too. Would have been nice to get that, but we still got it pretty early. Uh, we've got two brilliant weapons to clear. The run really picks up speed now with the rainbow. I'll show you why it's so good if you haven't played it. And it doesn't perform well without spores, really. It's pretty slow, killer otherwise. But it's its fast fire rate. And what do we got on here? Damage into fire, which is nice, which means we get out of fence with this weapon. We could use this run the whole way through, but we are looking for some better stats. Um, we're looking for a rate of fire 50% on killing. We might be able to use that chest we did back there. That's the sort of chest which is lovely to reroll that one and try to get the 50% lucky child or 50% rate of fire. So we just want to etch that. Anything, doesn't matter it's level 3 at this point, will etch in the second act because it's got four inscriptions. So if you etch it, we'll get it. We'll etch it and I'm going to use my upgrades on the Argus. And it's got 16 uh, projectiles and we're already a higher base damage than the weapon we dropped. So I only lost one craftsman or two craftsmen. There's a vault there. I'm just going to go get that. And now the vaults, everything is just going to melt. Now this weapon's great defensively because... Let's have a look there. Um, uh, plus 15 leg shot chance, energy is full, so that's not bad. That's in the, the top pick there is our second pick for the fast fire weapon. We get lucky shot out of it, and it's not on our inscription. Um, when, it means we don't have to do our E, and we've got fire on our weapon here, so. Oh, I didn't put jump back out didn't put spores on it show, let me show you not dying that's how I noticed something was wrong talking away now everything will die if we reforge it one two three four five six you just don't have the money if we'd done the others before to do this uh, one two okay now things will die it's on cooldown have to wait 15 seconds when you jump out like that at least you can jump out what do we know slower room to clear than it will be now good example though of just how powerful spores is when you get it early and this next boss is this room read your message really easy room for the injector everything can turns into a little beetle and you don't even see the beetles because we're killing so fast it auto targets them 
with the beetles and just dying. So you get snipers jump in here, and on the harder ones, you just come underneath and kill them, so they can't get an angle on you. You can shoot through walls with this, and that's why it's so defensively good. You shoot down, room's clear. Usually a hard room. Check around the room for like a, you know, sometimes there can be a craftsman in the rooms on high levels. Sometimes a peddler. Not a good one, it slows you down when you're doing corrosion, not that we are now, but we might have the radioactive glove later. Now the run picks up, you just have fun. Whether it was a run one or eight, and you can see on the video linked, run straight to those and just up it. We've got our weapon for the run now. Upping that just smashes the spore hits. Like everything hits harder with every increase on that weapon that we see across. So all we're looking at now is a scroll off a peddler. Uh, maybe a, an, in, an injector that might be a better rainbow, but or an angelic aura that's really awesome. Just looking for rate of fire on our main weapon, but we've got enough to go through the third act with this, and the second boss is going to melt. Um, we've got plenty of money. Um, I, I would like to get ostrich boots. Um, bullet lifeless lucky shot. Um, don't care about money. I don't even care if I burn through all this now. That's good life steal. You take more, but um, it does more damage, but it does fill up your health when you take a hit if we lose all of our shields. Uh, I don't do that. It's very good for builds that do health regen, like the dog, as I said before. There's a vault on the right, which we'll pop into. We're going to have retainers here. Usually diff difficult, but you just get on the other side and shoot through. I clear the room and come back for the vault because we're so clearing quickly now. Everything's just dying, even through shields, which slows the damage on this down. Just get around the corner here, they try to shoot you and they're dead. It's an amazing defensive weapon if you're trying to get your first R8 kill or first R8 jockle. I'm not selling anything because I've got 4,800. 4, Right click, if you have to shoot things like that, it doesn't auto target, we need an elite invasion here. It can be a really tough one, the, the hardest is the guy with the shield, but because we've got spores, he doesn't take much damage with the shield, it doesn't go through the injector, but it's usually the shield guy, oh this guy's here, he hurts really big time usually, we're going to melt him so quick it won't be funny. It's a lot of fun when you work out just how to play the game. And get spores early, let me tell you. If you've done anything before and after, uh, I'm going to do that one there for again, it's like a ammo re regen. And if I get the, the inscription that says 50% lucky shot for the first 50% of the magazine, that, that um, scroll is really important. So we're just looking now for craftsmen, we don't want to miss a single one. This room's really pretty hard usually. Especially if it's the four waves. Look at all the red dots, but it won't be for us. It'll kill them before they can jump down. They're the guys that are dangerous usually, but look how quick they're dying. And we've got fire weapon going on, so it's doing our defense of that one. We haven't got a lot of defense, but it, you don't have to use our E to proc it. Just our fire weapons propping it. I can see it there. Those tornadoes take the shield down really big and really quick, especially on high levels. He's up top, he's mortal. He didn't even jump down, why? Okay, next. Uh, just went through again. running around the other way to me. <laughs> We're running it the wrong way against each other. Come back to me. And enhanced or not, it's just one shotting. And I'm not kidding, go, go watch the uh, R8. I did R8 chocolate with me doing this in here with the same setup. These guys are usually really hard, just keep strafing them, they'll charge where you just were. But they're dying so quick, they're not an issue at this level. They obviously die slow on an R8, but not a lot slower. Okay, so we're looking um, at our picks there. 
Spiritual Flame gives us something. There's not a lot of great choices there. So we'll do... Yeah, we're not really getting any benefit out of that unless we're casting out E. But we don't really need it. That's where Spores comes to play at this point. Just looking around my mini-map to make sure I haven't missed. I can shoot down here, for instance. I come around the corner. Shoot through there. It's going to be our snipers here. Just get the they're dying too quick to show you, but you just keep them on the other side of this block here. And there's a wild hunt you would have got if you didn't get the uh, Argus. And that would bump up to a 15. I'll show you how that works. But it bumps up extra projectile. So the 16.25 means it's slightly better. And obviously we've upgraded the Argus already, so it's going to be superior. You can have a sniper down the end, a retainer. You can, you know, when it's harder levels, you'll just get him, you come down, you get him before he comes down. This next room, often in the harder levels, becomes innumerable elites. And can be a bit tough, but just the rainbow makes it a lot easier. You just keep them on the other side of the room. Just seeing what scrolls or weapons at that point, and we run straight to the castman, it pauses in single player. So you can bounce that up, every little bit makes that much difference. We'll be over 400 base damage, about 450 base damage around the last boss. Um, if we use every craftsman and don't miss them. I mean, we're killing them before they're jumping down. Just a point, if you're struggling with Nightmare, not Nightmares, but Nightmare mode, it's a lot harder than a Reincarnation 1 to 5 because of all the advantages that I've showed you here of the spiritual blessings you get to choose along the way and all that sort of stuff. Um, we haven't got anything for our uh, other build uh, that we're looking at, which is the unkillable. We haven't got our defensive choices, so you can really choice whatever build there. So I'm going to go for the conflag. It really hits a bit harder. Not that we're using it. We're up the boss. And the good thing about overconsumption is you get here a lot quicker. You're going to get through the first two acts. You might fail in the last on the really hard difficulties because of RNG or your learning. I'm not going to do that, but that's a good one um, on getting hit. It's a straight up 40% damage. Don't really need it because there you would have got your um, wild hunt there. I've never gone beyond this point and not got my spores ready to go to Act 3, you know, with everything I need. Bump that up. Make sure you got ammo, which we have. On this weapon, you want to right click his mouth to get crit. Let me try not right clicking and see if it just crits without it. No, you got to right click the mouth. He's just going to melt so quickly, even when you are not even going to get under the ground. And I think uh, if you look at the R8 video on the bunny, it's 8 second kill or something, 10 seconds. Um, so, you know, that's... Uh, I was looking at our Spiritual Flame build there. We probably want to get one of these at that point. Just makes the E hit harder, not that we're using it, but... Skill damage, so we still, you know, do a skill every now and then. We've got a rainbow, what's on it? Rate of fire, 25%, and it's got spores, so I'm swapping over. And 40% lucky shot. Plus we're getting 30% chance to recover ammo, a magazine when you kill an enemy. We're one-shotting everything, so that basically says we're not reloading. Really nice uh, example of stats on the weapon that is superior to the ones that we've got now. We lose our burning, but we're really not needing the defense. What have we got on the gauntlet? Uh, that's the really nice one that I like, the 50% rate of fire on killing the enemy. Um, but it hasn't got spores. And it, the thing is, this weapon, the rainbow, is not good for the next boss if it's the guy with the cannons. So I would roll that and then get the first craftsman. Um, but for the sake of the run, I'll get another weapon between them, even if it's on the peddler before that boss. Just want to make the run quickly quick to um now hopefully again you ask you want him fake death this is your last chance which we didn't get again um if we do burning we get up to 300 percent weapon damage that would be good for the fox but because i'm only doing an r1 i'm just going to do copycat which means i get really fast movement speed and i just want to make the run quicker we get their benefits placed on us whatever we're killing um, and look at the, that, because they're always enhanced on higher runs, you get really high movement usually. And all the other stuff, if I can kill quickly, and then show you what's down bottom here. 
we're getting movement speed 100, we're getting 50% crazy damage guarantee, 50% cooldown. We get whatever benefits we're killing. It's a, quite a good one. If uh, there's nothing there for survival. Uh, what do we got there? We're just looking for upgrades now. I love the movement. That's why we, it makes up for not having ostrich boots or abnormal speed scroll. Uh, great here, you can kill the octopuses there. Not even using our defensive now, but you know. just makes a run so much easier to play defensively and you know some scrolls we're not going to do the side rooms because that's where you get your most of your scrolls weapon upgrades in them but we got enough for now just to show how spores shines and bosses melt would like defensives because they are a bit of a class skinner but maybe we should do it on the fox just to get some scrolls which we haven't got yet he's a bit vulnerable for defense there's a vault, we'll do that vault quick. It's going to be so quick with this weapon and the spores early. They're usually coming into here collecting the spores weapons now. Just from that. These guys slow you, so I like to get the snow boots or the corrosive shard. Even if not using corrosive weapon, it means you're immune to the corrosion effects on you. Okay, so we'll just do um, our defensive, so when recharging, that's going to be good for the boss. But when you're recharging on that, you can see our shield. We can't see the numbers, 200 and something. It's awesome, that one. It's the best ascension for us for killing stuff in hard mode. I'm going to get an elite spawning here after trash. Some of the trash can be brutal. Could be a catfish. And the catfish is good with this weapon. You just get him on the other side of this rock and shoot him through and he can't hurt you. Sharks are in here. Lobs are spawning in here on high difficulty. There's the sharks. Just get them on the other side, they try to chain you through there. And if you've got movement speed, and it's going to be a lobster probably or something there. Yep. Yeah, you can do pretty dangerous. Usually without spores. Okay, and then that, and the goblet. Uh, again, we've got two of those now, awesome. I'm just trying to wait for that copycat stuff to disappear to show you the benefit of that. Uh, see how our shield's ticking down? You're going to get rid of it. I thought the copycat would disappear. But you do that, and our shield just every hit. You get hits on the boss, you just do a couple of these, and you back up, especially at uh, T3. Right, yep. And you don't have to hit anything even, though I think it increases if you do hit. Okay. Just looking, there is a peddler there that I missed. I always look at the minimap. I'm going to do that. And nothing else that's needed. Mainly looking for scrolls now. The peddler up ahead, so I'm keeping an eye on that. Just destroying in a vault. Bang, bang, bang. We'll do the vaults quickly. They're so quick with once you get spores that, and a chat chest. Uh, you can get rid of three scrolls, get an extra ascension, but you know, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to kill what's in the room too. Oh, second wave, crap. We should have paid attention to that. Just doing that for defense. And I'll clear those four waves here, so keep the... Just doing that for defense, keeping some burning on them. Third wave. Just keep strafing with the movement we got from Copycat, and what that does is like the chains will go where you just were on the sharks. They'll try to chain you through and hit the center column. At movement speed, you can see how essential it is for survival. You can move in for things like that. Last wave. Just getting out of here because it gets pulled on you. It's great for our lanterns if you target this weapon, whatever is closest to you. Get that cover down so you don't get slowed. Just try to get that monk down so we don't have continuous uh, lanterns on me. Okay, we got it. And do that for reloading in case we don't get the inscription that we have on this weapon. Uh, it's again, you've got to jump around for a single scroll. I won't do that. I just wanted to see if it was an easy elite. Well, not an easy elite. If it was an elite, we would do it easily. Okay. 
Um, no real great choices there. You can choose whatever you want. We're not doing any of those builds. We're not really casting our Meteor very often now. There's going to be lobsters up ahead and sharks are the most dangerous and monks that spawn on you. Lobsters are the priority above all. We've already got that up to nearly 378. We got it a little bit later. It would have been, you know, above 300 if we'd got it in the first day. But it's enough to do the heavy lifting for the run. And if you hadn't etched in the first act or known about that, you would have always got it around the third act. So there's the lobsters. I always go in the fourth. They can really nuke you. They do the most damage here, and a shark can like pull you in, and it's all over. There's a pedal out, we'll have a look on for a scroll in a second. I'm going into the lobsters and I keep moving because I saw that stuff behind us spawn. Just copycat skin and saw that moving. But you know, you can be moving this fast if you had. Um, we're getting 50% just from overconsumption. How much have we lost of that? Let me just kill this last thing. You can always check and do a throw out some scrolls that are a bit useless, but you can see we've got another eight scrolls we can get. And we're still getting a benefit. I've only lost 19%, so we've got 81% of their starting stats. That's, uh, that's just 15% lucky shot for one scroll. It's not too bad. Oh, we've got a radioactive glove. What do we got? That's what I want, and I can go back for the craftsman that was back here. And we know if we get the next boss, and it's the cannon boss, we're sweet for the whole run with this weapon now. What's this got? Give it a lot less money. No, I don't care about money. Yeah, what's back here? Just can't remember how far back it was with the talking. There he is. It's good to take a mental check. When I do play, I sort of concentrate. There's one here I can come back to if something drops. So again, it's already got it there. We just got to reforge it. Got it on the one roll. You can enhance and get an extra one here. So we've got 40% lucky shot, nice. 50% there, so you can get up to five here. Um, if the weapon's high enough and it already has four, it always has, already has Gemini on it. Really nice now, that's the one I'm really excited about. That won't help some bosses, but that will, and we lose 10% of that. But it's already, you know, firing at over a thousand, so. We're sweet right through to the last boss now. All we got to do is upgrade our off weapon, and if a better weapon drops, we just throw this and pick it up. Look how slow we go without. Copycat. Some now the it's the um, use the enhanced beam here on the glove, and what that does is refracts to three enemies within six metres of whatever you've got beams on. I'm waiting for over here on the top jumps down, the most dangerous are sharks. But we're gonna get some lobsters jump down around us in a second. Bit they sometimes jump down off the cliffs. There's usually a vault in this room before the last boss. On the side of a shed or something somewhere. If it's not a vault it would be a uh, Something helpful. Okay, where is the red thing? Oh, there it is. We had a goblet and we got the boss. I think oh, there it is. I thought there was. Just want to get a defensive scroll just to one last time if it's an easy room. And we got our pick there. We have to do our E to get the burning on to get the benefit of that, but we'll be doing that on the boss with an E just. Okay, this is easy for the glove and what we got. You just got to kill everything, not let it get to the. You're going to get monks, you're going to get longbowmen, but they're going to die so quick. Normally wouldn't come up this close with the monks. But we're killing them before they can get to us. The rate of fire is just making our explosions, our spores stack near instantly, you know. I'm not even doing refracted beam at the moment. I'm just killing them as they jump down with my left. Uh, 
And the other thing about this club, it's good defensively because it slows down the, um, where is it? There it is. It slows down anything that's on you, especially in the last act when it's hard on, on an eight. Um, you slow down the stuff that comes towards you. more elemental we're doing elementals so it's not helping us we'll go for the survivability it is a long proc but it can save your life on getting a big hit on the boss that could kill you the only reason i went in there was for a defensive scroll i mean dps scroll too we got this guy will be sweet so we've been all right with the rainbow if i didn't have the rainbow i'd be coming up to the peddler and seeing a fast fire weapon I got plenty of gold, um, you know, free rerolls, so we're always going to do something. Let's see what we would have gotten. So I would have got uh, that one. It's not terribly fast, but it's enough for spores, and it's got high projectile and extra projectile, so it's doing two times fifty-seven. So that would have done. I buy it and then see if there's something better on the next, um, and you know that could have done the job as well. It's got twelve hundred rate of fire, lucky shot chance, and so forth. So it would have been right. We always are. We got the rainbow to that point. Bump that up. We're now over 400. And it's boss time. Now our shield's 170, but we'll just do that. It went up to 230, and I'll just do that. Just to get our shield up to 250, he's going to do a jump it so we don't get hit by that. Dash out of that. Doing the fireball to get my shield back up and the shield region. Get in the middle of this one, in the middle of the slots, and just keep putting in. Get your fireball and defense back up. And he's down. So that's him. Uh, now it's a really good one. It is a bit dangerous, but it, the proportions you can check in a hard run. I usually do it if I get it early up until this point. And I might drop it before this boss if I don't have lots of defensive. Um, but what it does, as you'll see as it goes on, we're not killed anything. Our damage we do is much more than the damage we'll receive. And you can actually scroll over it and see when it starts to get a bit dangerous and toss it if you need. Now, if you're on Jockle, you could actually swap one of the three blessings you've got. But we're on a number one, so... You can't do that. On an 8 you can't do it. There's an Argus which we don't need. Just looking for an injector at this point that might be better than what we got, but that's unlikely. We've already got lucky shot chance and rate of fire on killing the enemy. Just looking for a scroll, that might be awesome. Nope. Oh, that's a great weapon too. It's got 5% five, 5 rate of fire on crit up to 75%. So on bossing or elites, if I was an R8, it would be very sweet to change to that. And then I'd be hoping to get a um, second one of unloading's not helping. One of the chests that says roll normals to uh, rare. Anyway, we can just run through here quickly. Oh, we have one there, and there's something here that's alive running around the wrong side of the rock. <laughs> can burn through here now. Again, notice I'm not using skill, it's all weapon damage now, scales so well. I'm only using the skill defensively and not having to because everything's dying so quick. That's the one, replace a random normal. Um, the only thing is I don't want to replace that, so I'm not going to risk it. So what I'll do is I'll do the weapon, uh, this one up by one. Let's do this real quick. These can be a bit crazy on our eights. But you do get a chance at a weapon or a scroll at the end that might be absolutely awesome. And those are the legendaries on the high difficulty seem to drop more for scrolls. And more so in this last act as well. The normals seem to drop a little bit more statistically in the earlier acts. Where are you guys down there? I'll just jump over the top and smash you. Just because the rooms are quick on an R1. That's a really nice one. Um, we'll, get, we'll get that 50% lucky shot on bosses or anything that lasts a little bit. 
Uh, the cavalry are the most dangerous in this last act. The sources you want to kill them because they put shields, but they're not. Don't rush in and die trying to get them. Just clearing that and then doing that quickly. Pop it up. Not even doing refracted beam because it's so powerful with the rate of fire and the lucky shot on it. It took me a while to work out. There wasn't a much on, on the internet about the actual inscriptions. They discussed them but didn't really say this is better. And they didn't say how spores worked and why. There was just nothing accurate on spores. And the interplay with inscriptions and the interplay with how it worked with fast firing being this is just a spore planner. Wouldn't matter if this was level three if it had, you know, really good inscriptions. The heavy lifting is done by the weapon we're not using. Tossed our weapon now, this would not be dying like this. Um, find a safe spot to even toss it and show you at this arc. Everybody's got so much health. Dangerous guys are the mountain guards here. They sort of um, trying to get that off. Doesn't matter about the shield because we're doing so much damage, it's one second away before the beam starts to actually do the damage. It's like nothing. Uh, what have we got? No, you don't get a choice here, so it's not going to help us too much. We're not casting our meteor for damage. We've got enough with spores. This is where it starts to, you know, in, in, in the high level, especially Jockle. Every room will be a challenge and something difficult. Those cavalry there are really dangerous. This weapon slows them from coming towards you. If they catch up to you like that, they can be a one shot. Our shield there just got taken down to a third by that one. Uh, that's a level one, they really hurt. Okay, we bounce that up. Base damage now about 500. I mean, that's really smashing. It used to be before, once I got spores late, never get that without the evil talisman that makes you immune to the damage of them. On an 8, these are more usually all enhanced. If you do Jockle, they definitely are all enhanced. We've got an alien invasion. Dangerous one. This is the most dangerous elite on, not for us, but um, on an 8, Jockle, they really tight plate. They put fire down, they've got so much health. Even with the best of the best, you've got to really have a bit of space to use them. And if you get the room of innumerable elites, you've got them and you've got the guy that splits into three. And you can have like three sets of those. It's crazy in solo, it really is. The drop or difference between normal and enhanced, so take a few bullets at the And some more. Die. Actually, these are good runs if you haven't got. You know, an R1 is, is a good way to just get essence really quickly. You don't have to do the side rooms, just running through at the best speed. And if you're just doing essence run, do it on the bunny, because it's got built in 50% speed. You get 10% for 6 seconds upon killing an enemy. And we're killing so fast that that's 100% uptime. So you get 100% movement speed really all the time. Let me just show you, like, we really, but let's show you there, the like, skill on that, which we're down to half. Let's see what our skill does on the big pack coming up. We did get pretty decent spiritual flame. Oh, killed him too quick to show you. Oh, just a press of the button. See that, anything with shield, the spiritual flame does not perform well. It really doesn't. That spores eat through it. And it would, you know, you need shock to go through those without spores. Spores eats through armor, it eats through, which is the yellow one. It eats through. Just the damage is so high, it doesn't matter what. You don't need the right element to be successful. Before spores worked like this, it was. Oh, I better pause, I'll be back in a sec. Sorry about that. Your life happens. As I said, I don't stream. I just have recorded because there was nothing current on this game, and I'm about to go on to some other game with uh, with my adult kids. That we always try to choose one. This cup coming out, Returner, which is a PlayStation 5 game, which was roguelite apparently. Well, it's got some elements to it, so pretty keen about that. Um, it doesn't affect us that one, so we won't lose our overconsumption. It should be boss now. Oh, it's one more boss, is it? Oh, I went back through. 
<laughs> oh, that was a vault. I always do that when I, I had a pause. Came out of a vault and, vault and realized it wasn't the actual run. Doesn't matter what you choose here, and we're not using Blazing Meteor anyway, so. This is the boss, so what's right? We're going to melt him in a way, and um, there's a video on me doing this on Jockle that I melted him probably as fast as I'm going to melt him now if everything comes together. Like, we haven't got any def like really good legendary scrolls, and on the harder runs, they seem, as I said, to um, defensive again, drop a lot more. I think that's coded in. I really think that the, co the game, people that designed this, my first roguelike game, have really done a great job of, as things get harder, not making it impossible. You just have to work out the angles, you know. He just does a frontal cleave. I'm just going to run it that to get our um, shield up a bit. So if we take a hit, it does sort of diminish, just kill that. Just do that to keep our shield up. We're going to burn him. We pushed him through, we didn't even get the orb phase. Which I've done on an eight, you know, to get good weapons. Uh, it wasn't even 50%. We were so safe on that. I hope that worked. And if you want to see, really, I'm not just making up that you can be doing that on an eight run. Um, maybe be a little bit, there's a bit of RNG, of course. Uh, have a look at the channel for the bunny. Uh, doing R8 and R8 Jocko. We've got a thousand essence, so we spent along the way, but you've got plenty for next time, you know. Um, just to say, you've got to have that filled out to be able to etch early, otherwise you can't get it till the third act. And the first craftsman in the third act, which really is a bit late on the harder runs. Best of luck, and I hope that helped you on the Fox to know that Spores is awesome. I looked at a Reddit post yesterday that just had that title and uh, people were confused again how it worked and talking about how it used to work and I did a little post just saying that it's, it's been to these videos actually. So I'll see you later, just wanted to clarify the confusion.